nation's favourite antiques experts. Let's get fancy. Behind the wheel of a classic car. I'm always in turbo. And a goal to scar Britain for antiques. Hot stuff. The aim, to make the biggest profit at auction. <gasps> but it's no mean feat. There'll be worthy winners. Cha-ching. Oh, my goodness. And valiant losers. Mm, bonkers. Will it be the high road to glory? You are my ray of sunshine. Oh, stop it. Or the slow road to disaster. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> This is Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. We're in the Scottish Borders. I think that we're really lucky, because wherever we go, we're welcome, aren't we? We are. No wonder, however... What did Robert Burns say? The best laid schemes of mice and men. They gang... What is it they say? Half gang wrangly. Sounds painful. It means that they don't always go to the bar. So our purchases yesterday went Afghan Wrangley. The Afghan Wrangley. It's now in my dictionary. It's all gone Afghan Wrangley. In the words of Burns, now's the day and now's the hour. <laughs> it's the second leg. And behind the wheel of this 1972 MGB Roadster are hotshot auctioneers. Natasha Raskin Sharp <laughs> and Philip the Smiler Cyril. If you had to choose, would it be the view or the car? It would be new, lovely. Oh, that's such a compact. So far, our road tripper besties are having a squeal of a time. I love you, Phil. Phil's been Phil. You could have four legs of a coffee table there, couldn't you? Tash has sparkled with delight. It's actually just lovely. Despite the spirit of competition. Let's win this thing and never speak to him again. And loving every single minute. Well, time flies when you're with someone you love and respect. I love you too. Can't wait to see what happens today. And we're just on the turn, aren't we? We're going to... Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> You're on the turn. <laughs> a lot of people have said that to me before. How dare they? <laughs> Tash started with 200 smackers from her very first sale. She made a small loss and now has 173 pounds and 84 pennies. But looking good. Phil also began with 200 pounds and lost a titch less. He has 176 pounds and 20 pennies, so it's close. Do you have a taste for glorious Scottish countryside? Uh, Look at our surroundings. This is just the best, isn't it? Their Four Nation tour began in the Lake District, crosses the border to Scotland, jumps over to Northern Ireland, and will conclude with an auction in Wrexham. Gosh. I do like these dry stone walls here, look. Oh, it's not like you to mention a wall. Imagine if you could take a dry stone wall to auction. Hundreds and hundreds of years old. Oh. Glorious. Wouldn't like to be the courier. Our best pals are in Roxburghshire, concluding shopping in Berwick upon Tweed. First stop, Hoyk. And it's only fitting that in the town internationally renowned for knitwear that we're shopping in a former textile mill. How nice. Look at that. Right, I'm taking us right to the door. How cool is that? Now, this looks very snazzy. Every space is filled, from delicate glassware to large pieces of furniture. Let's see what they uncover, eh? You see, I love things like that. Isn't that just quality? This is a Victorian burr warmer cabinet. These are Ormolu mounts. Ormolu is uh, gilded brass or bronze, I think. But if you just look at the detail here, You've got some really subtle inlay just there. But if you look at the top, you've got this wonderful burr walnut. And it's kind of like... It's like the colour of chewed toffee. Painting a picture there, Phil. And I think that's a really, really good thing. And the price is... £1,650. If I added a naught to my budget, I'd have had about 80 quid left if I could buy that. Bit too expensive, then. Across the shop... Here it is. Look at this lovely Regency mirror. And while everything about this is, to my eye, right, but what's instantly incorrect is the mirror. Because a Regency mirror of this style, of this quality, which isn't, you know, the best, 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 but it's lovely, 
should have a beveled edge mirror. 100% there should be a facet creating a border at the edge of that mirror and without it, straight away, it doesn't scream repro, it screams replaced. It's a no from me. What you got there, Phil? So this is a Victorian stool turned on a lathe. If you're going to look at a stool or a chair or something like that, you're going to look for two things. You want to make sure that there's no breaks. And this top is leather cloth rather than leather. Do you know, in a way, that kind of shabby appeal, something that I have in common with it. Never shabby, Phil. Cuddly, maybe. Huh. Tell us a surprise. It's priced at £32, which I don't think is a lot of money. I don't think it's a lot of money at all. So I think that's something I'm definitely going to have a go at. One for you, Phil. Yoo-hoo, Natasha! <laughs> Look at this action from the side. It's quite delightful. Good action. Yeah, it's a lovely sandwich tin. I'm looking and I'm not seeing... A silver mark, which is probably why this is on the table and not in a case. Let's call it 1905. So it's an antique. And I like it. And look, £15. This is almost 10% of my budget, but still leaves me room for loads more. I think I'm quite taken. I think you definitely are. Now, what's Philpot up to? These are interesting. These are hunting subjects, probably 19th century. And I'm pretty sure that they're watercolours and they're kind of signed just down here. But sadly, my eyes are as old as the rest of me. Call a friend, maybe? Tash, can I borrow you, lovely, a second? By all means. Oh, what are you looking at? Well, I like these and all I wanted to ascertain really is, do you think these are overpainted prints or do you think they're originals? No, I think I can see from here they're original. Do you think so? Yeah, they are... Charcoal, pencil and gouache on card. They're, lo they're lovely as well. I quite like them. They're lovely. Oh, they have titles. What does that say? Well, I, I couldn't read that. I mean, your eyes are about 45 years younger than mine. I think that says bellows to mend. Do you think that's an equestrian term? Bellows to mend, bellows it to is, mend. I've never heard of it. <laughs> it's actually old slang for being out of breath. Quite apt for this sporting moment. You've kind of satisfied my query, which was they're not overpainted prints. But they're a bit foxed, aren't they? Sorry? Foxed. Oh, right, I yeah. said foxed. Steady. So oh. foxing is dampness coming out of the paper, isn't it? Airborne acids. Oh, stop finding such good stuff and then showing it off. Yeah, you, you mean like a... He rubs like... it in. Well, the paintings expert is well gel. Another possible for Philpot. Print. Oh, hello. More art. £75. Is that a print? Looks like a watercolour. Oh, that's original. That is an original piece. Right. Hold on to your horses. Right. This has been, uh, this, is, this has been pulled back before. An Italian peasant. Fab. £75. It's a bit punchy for a print, really. I think I'm going to ask what the best price is, because... Yeah, I've quite fallen for her. Huh? I thought it was William Defoe. <laughs> now, what's Philpot got in the frame? I think these are kind of pure Art Nouveau. They are... They're not leaded lights. Normally, you'd expect these to be leaded, which is where the lead divides the different colours of, of glass and whatever. But these are actually painted and then the paint is fired so that it doesn't kind of rub off. And I think those are really cool. This Art Nouveau stained glass window is unpriced. Made by hand, they followed the principles of upholding true craftsmanship against the invading Industrial Revolution. A beautiful thing, Phil. Stand by, Morris. Morris, how are you doing? Hi, Phil. I think I've found three things. There's a little leather cloth top stool, which I think you've got £32 on. You've got a pair of hunting kind of gouache things. And I love those um, windows over there. If I could buy all three for, like, 90 quid, that would be 
It's just the colour drain from your face then, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Where can we go with those then, do you think? Well, one ten for the lot. Well, I tell you what, I'm not going to argue with you. I'll have I'll have them for 110. So that's £20 for the Victorian stool, 45 for the pair of 19th century huntsmen, and 45 for the Art Nouveau style window. Thank you, Morris. That bumper buy gives Phil just £66.20 remaining. It will all be sent onwards to auction. While Phil goes off on his travels. Back inside, Tash is ready to strike a deal. Oh, Morris, you're right there. Hello. Let's start off with the late Victorian portrait. It's marked up at £75. Is that the very best price? Does it have to be 75 or is there something 55. on there? 55 OK. Um, so the other item is a novelty silver-plated box. It's just so adorable. So 15 plus 55 is £70. Would you be happy to do the two for £60? £60. Pounds? 60 pounds. Yes, yeah, that's fine. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll do oh, that. Oh, well, I'd be really grateful for that. That breaks down to 45 for the late Victorian portrait and 15 for the early 20th century silver-plated sandwich tin. Thanks again, Morris. Wish me luck. Wish me luck. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Tash now has £113.84. <laughs> Philip is taking a rest from the old shopping. He's made it to the town of Jedburgh. The birthplace of a jail with revolutionary Georgian improvements, considered the most modern of its time. Phil is going to find out about the father of prison reform, John Howard. His vision for better conditions were implemented right here at Jedburgh Castle Jail. Museum curator Shona Sinclair has all the answers. This kind of looks like it's hundreds of years old, is it? No. This was built in 1823. It's made to look like you're protecting people uh, inside from the outside, but actually it was the reverse. Vice versa. Yeah, but was... prisons in those days must have been a bit brutal, must not they? Um, they were, but actually this was built on John Howard's principles, and this was a huge improvement on conditions that prisoners were kept in before. you better show me around. Absolutely. Round. Yeah, yes. come on then. The year was 1773. As a high sheriff, Howard began a 17-year study of prisons, not only in the UK, but as far afield as Russia. John was on a mission to revolutionise the penal system. Prison reform, at the time, you were creating a, a system that was, that was well run, before it wasn't well run, so you'd have, like, uh, jailers that were paid. Previously, they, they didn't. Jail was a bit chaotic. Pre-Howard and the other reformers that came along that said, build proper places to put people as a punishment, make them clean, make them sanitary, um, give them a, a basic diet, not a fancy diet, stop disease, punish them, then you let them go, hopefully to be reformed and never wanting to come back. Fearlessly diving into the depths of depravity in prisons all across the land, Howard's plan was simple. One of Howard's thing was separation. So one person to a cell. One person to a cell. Before that, cells and prisons and jails were you'd just have everybody all slung in together. So Males, separation. Females, kids. Children, untried, tried. And what other kind of uh, views did Howard have to, for the benefit of the prisoners in terms of reforming them? Well, one of the things was about uh, giving them something to do. So prior to Howard, you were thrown in jail and you were given nothing to do. Locked up. You were just locked up. Um, he talked about giving people things to do that benefited themselves, but also communities. Although the prison here was built after Howard's death, it was constructed with his ideals for humane treatment of all those locked up here. It remains today as one of the best preserved prisons with Howard's reforms. As a big textile town, they would prepare wool for processing, but fresh air and exercise were also key for the welfare of the prisoner. Oh, wow. So this is one of our exercise yards that would have been used in the, in the jail. So if you would like to walk this way. Tell me, like, how many jailers were there here to look after 
the prisons. Well, quite surprisingly, there was only one jailer for the yeah. whole prison complex. Um, he could employ his wife as the matron. In a way, it's quite therapeutic, this. Mm, it wouldn't have been, I don't think so. You would be in single file and no chatting. What? None at all? None at all. So shut up and get on with your exercise. Oh, you don't mess with Shona, do you? No. Hopefully this will knock some sense into Cyril. From the dark, disease-ridden dens of iniquity, John Howard sought for change. Jedburgh Castle Jail stands as testament to his new ideals and marks the beginning of the evolution of the penal system. Where art Natasha? Phil's jokes, they, they don't get any better with time, do they? I mean, they do make me laugh, but they don't get any better, do they? They're wild. He's a wild man. He certainly is. Tash has now arrived in Kelso. Along the cobbled streets lies Kelso Antique Centre. With 113 pounds and 83 pence, what can she spy in here? One thing that's caught my eye is this Maltese cross hardstone brooch. I think I just really enjoy the symmetry of a Maltese cross. With origins in Christianity, the Maltese cross also has medieval roots, with knights during the Crusades serving as a symbol of honour and courage. And I just think there is something quite wearable about the style, not necessarily just a religious market, just brooch wearers, and loads of them. Brooch wearers, men, women, people love to accessorise. But I have a horrible feeling that when I turn this around, I don't see any marks. And it would just be so nice if this were fully hallmarked. It's priced at £45. Alas, at auction, this would have to be catalogued as unmarked or white metal because there is no hallmark. And do you know something? For the buyers you want to attract, that's really off-putting. They want to know that there's precious metal content. But at auction, unmarked. Could that make £10? It could. And then even with a chunky discount, it's a chunky loss. At this point, because I've lost so much money, small losses can make a huge difference to my overall budget. So this was my top fave when it came to design in the shop. But I think I have to put it back. So I might have to walk away and do a bit of a Macbeth and say to myself, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. As in, I'll try and find more tomorrow. And on that Shakespearean note, we shall depart this fine shop empty-handed. Maybe Tash can find solace with Phil. Oh, have you ever had a fritter? What's his fritter? Oh, a fritter. Oh, are you kidding? I bet you just call them something else down south. What? A big slice of potato deep-fried. What, that's it? Yeah. That's a scallop. No, it's a fritter. No, it's not, it's a scallop. It's a fritter. Potato, potato, nighty night. Cock a doodle doo. We're raring to go. You love sport, don't you? Yeah. You're obsessed with sport. You know the lots. term the goat? Yeah. The greatest of all time. Do you reckon you're the goat? I think I probably am a goat. Oh, you are. Yeah, you do give me a bit of goat. You smell no. like a goat, actually. Hello. <laughs> Smiling? <laughs> what have you done with the Cyril, Tash? <laughs> Yesterday, Natasha practised extreme caution on just two items, an early 20th century silver plate sandwich tin and a late Victorian portrait. I've quite fallen for her. Leaving her with 113 pounds and 84 pence. 60. Wish me luck. Well, Phil Pot went for it, spending a lot more on a Victorian stool, a pair of 19th century huntsman paintings, and a 19th century Art Nouveau style window. And I think those are really cool. Which means Phil has just over £66 remaining. Thank you. Fingers crossed. Are you going to try and buy anything today, English or Scottish? Oh, it depends which side of the tweet I'm on. I don't know. I. I... Do you know something? I just hope for happy times. Yeah. Happy times, Phil. Remember them? It was only a minute ago. <laughs>
Their travels today will be around Northumberland and the Scottish borders. With Natasha dispatched elsewhere, Phil's starting off in the Northumberland village of Ford. The village was given a makeover in the 19th century by Lady Waterford, creating this rural idyll. Now it's home to old forge antiques, a blacksmith's forge right up until the 1970s. Don't you love the horseshoe entrance? <laughs> oh, it is lovely and toasty in here too. You'd never know it, though, looking at Phil. This is a paradise for our country boy, rustic, with a capital R. Phil. Lovely. So what I love about my job is it's all kind of down to social history. And this is, this is, I mean, what a great bit of sculpture that is. It's a peat cutter. What do you call a man who is waist deep in a bog? Uh-oh. Pete. Oh. Now, what do you call a man with a shovel? Doug. <laughs> See, that's got several written all over it. A garden roller. Look at his little eyes light up. He's smiling so much today. I didn't know he had teeth. I really like that. I really, really like that. So, let's just have a look at this. You've got a cast garden roller and you've got a kind of mythical figure here. That's obviously a replacement there. That's a replacement there. And the handle has clearly got nothing to do with it. Apart from that, it's lovely. <laughs> and the fourth issue is someone's got to put it in the truck. And the fifth is it's £75. Let's move on. This is quite nice, isn't it? I mean, if you're going to have a fish supper, have a fish supper. There is your big kind of salmon plate. This is probably Lake Victorian Edwardian. And we've got... And they've all got different fish printed on them. Perhaps for scallops or mussels. I wish I knew me fish better. So just always just run your fingers around the outside. Because if you can't see damage, you can always feel it. You can feel a chip on the edge of a plate. So while I'm talking to you now, you can just feel a bit of a nick there, look. Top tip, Phil. We've got six of these plates. Two, four, six, eight, nine of these. It's not the best quality, but I, I think if it hadn't got fish on it, you know, you wouldn't even look at it. Stand by, John. I'm going to be completely open with you. I have got £66 left in total. I'd really like to have a go at that fish service, which I couldn't see a price on, but if you can do that, that would be brilliant. I thought you didn't know your fish, Phil. It was priced at £75 for the set. Um, seeing as though it was you, I think I can, I can go with you at £36. What a gentleman. What a gentleman. Are you sure? Yes, I am. I want you to be happy yes. with it. Oh, that's really no, kind. Very... Thank you, John. Really generous of you. What a catch! Phil now has £30.20. and p <laughs> Meanwhile, Natasha has arrived at Spittle Beach, close to Berwick-upon-Tweed. The golden sands and frothy waves of the Northumbrian coastline may look idyllic now, but back in the 19th century, this stretch of coast was feared by mariners, with many ships wrecked along its perilous coastline. Therefore, a lifeboat station was built here in 1834. Because of the souls in danger at sea and the brave locals risking their lives to save them, it was clear the rescuers needed protecting. Volunteer and second coxswain Kevin Knox can share just how effective the pioneering safety measures were. I think that the crews back then, obviously, they needed a lot more because of their own boats. Mm. And obviously, back in the day, it was the, the men who would be rowing the boats, and quite often it was the women who would actually launch the boats. Oh, so they were very involved as a community. Despite this bravery, the early 19th century would see an average of 1,800 shipwrecks a year along the coasts of Britain. The brave lifeboat men were exposed to the elements which would prove fatal for many. They needed protection, something to keep them buoyant. But what? So the first life jackets, 
They tried various different uh, materials. Obviously, they had to think of uh, the weight of them. They had to think of the waterproofing. And it had to be something that the men could wear on the boats when they were rowing. So they tried various kinds of wood. Beoba was one of the ones that they tried. That was quite expensive. It wasn't good enough. In 1854, the world's first life jacket was invented by RNLI inspector, Captain John Ward. They tried everything, um, and then eventually they came on to cork. So they used the cork sewn together inside the life jacket, and it, was, it would take about 25 pounds uh, of buoyancy. It caught on fully in 1861 after the Whitby lifeboat disaster. The sole survivor was the only crew member to be wearing Ward's invention. Today, lifeboat men and women continue to be well equipped and highly skilled at attending emergency rescues. Within seven minutes, they can be launched and heading out to sea. Give it a go, Tash. Ready, steady, go. <laughs> Kev, I'm terrified. Go as quick as you can, that's How it. How many of you would be doing this? There's about six. OK, here we go. I've got a zip. Oh, I'm stuck. I'm zipping. Then your inner layer, if you put that one on. Right. Is that what you're wearing just now? That's what I'm wearing at the moment, so that's the inner layer. <laughs> and then the outer jacket. I think I'm slow. I have a feeling I'm slow. Oh, you're doing OK. You're doing OK. Thank you. Out of time. The boat's actually leaving. Not bad for a first go, though, Tash. Captain Ward's invention of a simple cork vest brought about a sea change in offshore safety, ensuring many lives being saved from the ravages of the mighty ocean along our coastlines. Right, let's find Philip. Hello. Look at you. Yeah, Look at they're you. not interested, Phil. Come on, Red. Come on, Red. Come on, matey. How are you? Hey, am I going to buy you? No, thanks. You're lovely, aren't you? You are lo What a lovely dog you are. Thank you, Farmer Jim. But best get Red returned, eh? We're bound for Berwick-upon-Tweed, a town of high strategic importance it's been part of both England and Scotland over its long history. It's said to have changed hands 14 times. Gosh. Oh, there it is. Look, Rojo. We'll find somewhere to park now. Today, we're shopping in this Swish Emporium, run by the very lovely Roland and Jonathan, both artists and art historians. Let's see what Phil gets up to in here. Fun. just reminds me of my childhood. So these are a set of shears. And in the olden days, my granddad, he'd have sheared the sheep on our farm with these. I mean, just how cool are those? It just reminds me, I must get a cut at the weekend. You've got a lovely head of hair for your age. <laughs> Natasha is just up the road. She's going in here named after the Cygnus Swan constellation on the Milky Way, don't you know? Natasha has a wadge of just over £113. Oh, I'm really enjoying this shop. This is my style. I feel like I've walked into the Belle Epoque. We're at the end of the 19th, into the 20th century, and I don't want to be thinking about Phil in the competition. I want to be buying everything for my flat. Come on, Tash. Business head on, please. These are smart. These are actually just wall sconces, so properly for your candle. So wall mounted candle holders. How smart are they? Okay, so they've been knocked a little bit. I think that this is <laughs> this could well have fallen off a wall because those are at a bit of an angle and those are not those branches. So yeah, okay, they've taken a knock, but they've been around for over a hundred years, I'd say. Pretty good, all things being considered. Oi, 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 oi. What do we have? Pear lights, circa 1900. Ah, 45 pounds. OK. Dig the price, dig the style. Yeah, they're on the list. They're really smart. I think no matter what, I'm going for those. Across town, is Philip finding success? 
He's found dealer Jonathan to help, it appears. There's a really nice woodblock print, which yeah. is William Armour, a Scottish um, artist from about the 1920s, 30s, and that's called the Plank Bridge on the Isle of Skye. I think that's a really smart thing. Now, this could be a goodie as the auction is in Scotland. William Armour studied at Glasgow School of Art in 1918 and would later become the school's head of drawing and painting. Nice find. So that's a wood block, isn't it? And, and basically, you would carve the wood out with a chisel yep. and then you rub ink over it, and what you've carved out actually comes out as the white bits. That's it. That can be £30? Really? Yep. Auction choice for the competition is that from you telling me it's a Scottish artist. While Phil has a good old think, let's zip over to Tasha. This looks very Shukin and Heath, if you know the maker. Christopher Dresser designed for them. It's just so smart, that plated exterior. I wonder who came up with the notion of silver plate juxtaposed with a reeded handle. Whoever did is a genius. But there's something about the mix of materials, the colour, that beige colour against the silver is just, mm, chef's kiss, gorgeous, love it. Chef's kiss? From the turn of the 20th century, William and Robert Sawley formed one of the largest and most exclusive silversmiths in the city. So this is from my hometown. Just look at the design for design's sake. Have you seen how sharp this spout is? That is, that's, that's a crisp pour, that's all I'm saying. And then, just to match the lovely angular shape of the handle, look at those feet. Ticket price is £35. Wow. And let's see if I can get it for a price that starts with a two. That would be... Wait for it. My cup of tea. Ah, uh, you've been around Phil too long. Speaking of our Worcester warrior... Uh, guys, you've got a lovely shot. Thank really you. lovely. So I'm going to buy the wood cut off you. You're happy with £30? Yes. OK, there's the 30 Thank you. Thank you, chaps. Very generous of you indeed. Phil has just 20 pence remaining. Now, Natasha, is she still choosing? Just a bygone age, isn't it? I think that's a desk blotter. I presume this would have been a lady's because it's very heavily embossed brass cover, very Art Nouveau, with its little folly it forms. It's so sweet and it's quatrefoil and, oh, it's little flower heads. That's really attractive. The desk blotter was on trend in the second half of the 19th century, a protector not only of smudges on your correspondence, it also shielded the beautiful desk you were writing upon. I'm sorry, but this is the sweetest thing I've ever seen. So, inside, oh, yep. Really nice condition on the inside, look at that. So, a spot for your calling cards. Oh no, that one has a seam, so maybe that's for stamps. And then, look, yeah, very similar to the other piece, a blotting section as well. That's delightful. Neither desk blotter has a ticket price. They make a lovely pair, and I think that there would be people in an auction who would buy those. Who doesn't love things to do with letters? I love receiving letters. It's all right, more letters. Here, here. We also have the arts and crafts pair of brass candelabra at 45, and the silver plated spirit kettle at 35. Stand by, Julia. Julia? Yes. I love your shop. Well, I think I think for all of those pieces, uh -huh. I could say 110. In that case, we'll make it 110. I okay. do think they're all really smart items. That all breaks down to a 45 for the pair of arts and crafts, brass candelabra, 35 for the silver-plated spirit kettle, and 30 pounds for the combo lot of late Victorian desk blotters. With just three pounds and some pence left, this big shopping bonanza is finito. Do not drop. What I think is really interesting about this wall uh -huh. is look at the way it's kind of got that dome top. Someone has shaped all of those. Yeah, it's curated. It's yeah. considered. It's a considered wall. I think yeah. it's a, an 8 out of 10, if I'm honest. No. Solid yeah, 8. 7 and a half. Interesting thought. Let's get some shut eye, eh? With breathless anticipation, our road trippers are gearing up for their second auction. 
where a wee Tash started her career many moons ago, I remember it well. Come on, I know we shouldn't be nervous. We're used to going to auction. Go on, give me some words of wisdom. Be afraid. Be very <laughs> afraid. Very soothing. Our chappy duo, after a whiz around Northumberland and the Scottish borders, are now in glorious Glasgow. To McTeer's auctioneers. Today's sale is in the room, on the phone, and the World Wide Web. Our charming gavel wielder is James Bruce. Uh, warning, at ten pounds then. Natasha bought five lots for the sum of £170. What do you think, James? The Arts and Crafts silver-plated uh, tea kettle on stand is very much in the manner of Dr Christopher Dresser. It's got a good local name of Sawley of Glasgow, and I'm sure this will resonate with our buyers. Five lots for Phil, too, for the sum of £176. What's your fave? We are in the home of uh, stained glass, and I think this stained glass panel would make a good addition to uh, many of the period places around the city of Glasgow. Back to our happy pair. Natasha is first up with the stylish silver-plated spirit kettle. We can open this. There's £15 online, but oh, I've got 20 going. here. 20 in a book commission bid. Oh, keep going. At 20 here, 5, 30, and 5 it's jumped oh, to now. 35, do you have 40? 40 if you're in online, £40 bid. There's oh, two God, of you, you out there. 45 would Great. be next, but Go all on, online, James. it's taken it from me. Go at on, Jimbo. £40. <laughs> Five jumped in at the very end there. Good sir. On my left, 50. What's your response? £50, you're out. We're all happy then. Five back in. <laughs> 55 back in, good sir. £60 here we are, and you're out. Thank you very are much you for your serious? competition. Now, warning. Yes, we are. This lovely kettle, originally from Glasgow, brewed up a storm. Wow! Thank you. That was your Two prediction. Bar, Have MCT, you ever considered one, a career zero, seven, in antiques? Seven, no, I'll be seven, hopeless. Seven, right. Philip, you're up next with the 19th century Art Nouveau window. 15 with me, 20 if you're in, 20 is no bid, and 5 standing. 25 oh, they're standing, in the room, they're in the 25 room. and 30. 35 if you wish, sir, bid. 35 and 40. 5 is bid, 50 pounds. And 5? One more bid, surely 55 is bid. 55, 60 is bid oh, here. Phil. And five is no bid, you're not letting up, sir. 65 standing at 65 pounds. Now, foul warning. Another hit with the Glasgow crowd. I'm pleased, I'm pleased. Glad to hear it. Time now for Natasha's early 20th century silver-plated sandwich tin. I've got 15 here, so oh. you'll have to bid 20 if you're in. 15 here in the book. Go on. And you've answered 25. Five here, 30 if you're bidding. 30, I've got five. Fantastic. Anyone else in? The room, 40, thank you, sir. <laughs> On my left, at 40 pounds, to the room, thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. That's I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised about you. Do you know, you didn't have that much confidence in your lot. I am not at all surprised with that. Another delicious profit for Tash. I'm so thrilled. This is great. Phil next with his woodcut engraving by Scottish artist William Armour. £35 is the starting bid. Of course it is. £35, are we done? No. 40 no. 40, yes. any advance? At the last minute, we are bid 40. Fair warning, 45 no. Yes. 45. Yes. You're playing it slow there at 45. Let them play. The hammer will come down. That's 45, and that is is You tell 18. me. Yeah, someone's just got themselves a brilliant bargain. Still did you proud, still oh, made yeah. a profit, and your dealer was right, you should have bought it. Yeah. Now it's her, his and hers, our nouveau blotters. Who is bidding at £30? Oh, £30, surely, no for the two pieces of stationary equipment. £20, oh, surely then. Dropping. £20, dropping. 10 if you're in. Oh, £10, pounds. who's bidding at 10 online? Oh, Thank you. £10, we're all online. Oh, are we done? That's ten pounds. I'll oh, give you your done. last shot here, and the hammer will come down very gingerly at ten pounds <laughs> here. At they were beautiful. Yeah. The first loss of the day. Pity. Nice things. Can Phil hook a whopper with his late Victorian fish service? Fish service by Franz at ten pounds. Where's fifty? An extensive service at ten and fifteen and twenty. Twenty against you here, commission bid. At 25 is bid online, thank you. At 25, surely another. At 30, bid no, thank you. At 35, and I will no sell. At 35 pounds, foul warning. 
Blimey, the one that got away. Only a tiddler of a loss. Pick the bones out of that. <laughs> right, Tash, it's your pair of arts and crafts brass candelabra. We've got ten pounds in the book, surely worth another. Ten pounds, oh, any advance on. at ten here. Fifteen now and twenty. Any advance keep at going, twenty. Keep going. We are oh, bid keep going, at twenty. Keep going. Five, five and thirty. Oh, keep are going, you keep coming going. back here? Yes, go, go, go. Thirty pounds here. No, no, no. Five. Fair warning at thirty pounds then. <sighs> Do you know what they say? It's better to travel in expectation than to arrive in disappointment. <laughs> I've heard you say that before. Hard luck, Tash. That will haunt me. Philip now with the Victorian stool. 20. 5 here. 30 is bid on 9 euro, sir, are you perhaps? 35? No. On, 30. We are bid on 9 then. There's another waiting oh, oh, in the wings, oh. though. At 35 pounds. They love 40 it, Phil. if you're in. They love it. I can say fair warning and the hammer will come down. <laughs> yes. We're eating out profit, aren't we? Well, eating. You are. Oh, every little helps, Philip. Do you know, I've never been to your home, but I'm picturing Full of rubbish a like that. lot of yeah, objects yeah. like that. Absolutely right. Yeah. Will the late Victorian portrait from Tash charm the bidders? Who is in at £30? Go on. £30, who will buy? Please. £20 then. Oh, no. £20. Surely a bit at 20 Please. 10 I will take. Oh, will you? £10 if you're coming in at 10 Thank you on my left. see why she doesn't look very happy. There's a 10, of 10 pounds Who bad. is bidding at £15? Oh, £10. Fair warning. At £10 then. My soul. It just evaporated. One, one. Tad dramatic, but I feel your pain. It's a sucker lemon time, that, isn't it? Oh. Right, it's the final lot. Phil's 19th century hunting paintings. We got ten pounds online, but surely another. There's two sure. of them. Ten pounds. Wonderful pair at ten pounds. Who is in at fifteen? Surely. Ten pounds online. Any this interest in the room? Fair warning. Reluctantly. I would have bought them every day of the week. The perils of auction. That's a pity. You've done much better than I have, so, Phil, this leg is yours for sure. Well, I don't know that it is, actually. It is. Well, let's find out, shall we? Natasha began with £173.84, and after auction costs today, she made a small loss, leaving £126.84 for next time. While well, Phil started with 176 pounds and 20p, and after all costs, he has made a weenie loss today. He now has 156 pounds going forward. Phil is today's auction winner. It's not about the winning and losing. No. It's about the taking part. And the journey. The journey. <laughs> and on we go. Next on the trip, we are loving livestock. Oh, there's a nice cow. Nice, here he goes. <laughs> Natasha shows off. And Phil is a bit of a daredevil. Oh, I can't sit at all. Oh, my life. <laughs>